Your neck allows your head to move so you can see on all sides, embracing a larger reality than the one just in front of you. Deb Shapiro, your body speaks your mind. Hello and welcome to episode number 349 of Yoga with Melissa. We are continuing our back to school yoga series and today we are doing an, I decided to call it an anatomy class. It's not, this is definitely not hardcore anatomy. We're just focusing on a part of our anatomy today. We are going to focus on our neck and our spine today. And so I will get you in a posture to start with uh, one of the movements that we will be focusing on for our spine today, which is a lateral movement of your spine. You're going to need uh, props today. You're going to need a round bolster today. So I want to thank Dusky Leaf for my round bolster. The thing I love about my round bolster is that it holds its shape. See, I can... <laughs> I could stand on this thing and it wouldn't flatten out. So you're going to lie over the bolster with this under your ribs and take your arms overhead and you're going to hang out there. I, I will, I'll flip you over, don't you worry. But our side bodies get quite shortened from a lot of sitting. So it's really important to spend some time opening them up. If this is too much, get a, a smaller prop. It might even be enough just to have a folded blanket underneath your rib cage. Breathe into your side ribs. So I wanted to say this is real yoga for real people. This is yoga that, that you can do. And thank you for, for welcoming me into your home for the next hour as we journey into our innermost home. Make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end where I will tell you where you can go to get my back to school list for the 10 essential yoga classes to get you through our back to school season. Thanks to Squeeze Yoga Clothing, today I am wearing a purple dancing Ganesh top with uh, long black leggings. We will start with our peace mantra to bring us together as student and teacher. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahano Bunaktu Sahaviryam Karvavahe Tejasvina Vadita Mastu Mavid Vishavahe Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And the mantra asks us to be protected together, student and teacher. May our studies nourish us together. May we work together in the union for the good of all. <laughs> Nonviolence except for mosquitoes. It got me. <laughs> <laughs> the good of all except for that, mos that poor mosquito. <laughs> he left. <laughs> May our learning be luminous and purposeful. May we live in harmony. Peace, peace, peace be unto all. Mm. I have a testimonial for you from Helen from Norway today from SpeakPipe. Hello, this is Helene from Norway. I would just like to say thank you so very much for your enthusiasm and all the nice episodes from 1 to 31 in, in beginner yoga. I have watched ev each and every one and I'm so 
glad that you did this and I'm so so very very thankful so I just wanted to say thank you very very much goodbye from Norway Thank you, Helene, for taking the time to send me that message through SpeakPipe. And just so you know, you can do that beginner challenge anytime if you go to my website and you click on the uh, triangle or the new to yoga button, then it will take you to that list of 31 classes that go through my 31 beginner. We have more than 31 beginner classes, but those I think are the most important 31 beginner classes to go through first. And then I want to thank each and every one of you who do take the time to leave you leave your comments about your yoga practice and let me know about your yoga practice on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, SpeakPipe on my website. And as always, the most in-depth conversations always happen in our membership community. And this week, like yesterday and the last few days, I've really spent a lot of time catching up on my comments on YouTube, I think I probably responded to, to about 200 comments on YouTube in the last couple of days. So thank you everybody who's been leaving comments on YouTube. I think we're all caught up now. <laughs> if not, <laughs> leave the comment again so I can <laughs> respond to you. Okay, it's time to switch sides for that side men. So uh, whatever side you're on, let's do the other side. So you're going to place it under your ribs again, lie over it and open it up the other side of your body. Okay, from here we're going to come up onto all fours for cat pose. And in cat pose we can move our spine in every direction. So place your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. And we'll start with flexion and extension. Spread your fingers wide, reach your, the weight of your hands out into the webs of your hands. If you have any issues with your wrists, you can always come onto your fists here. So exhale and round up through your back, tuck your chin so you involve your neck and inhale and arch through your back and look up so you're involving your neck as well. So exhale and then round, inhale and arch. And then let's do that side bending in cat as well. So take your spine, walk your hands to the side and take your spine in a side bend here. And then we'll walk over to the other side. So you're bending your spine to the other side. So I'm walking to the left, so I'm pulling my right hip back. And then come back to the center and then we'll add rotation. So inhale, open to your left arm up. Exhale, rotate, lower your left shoulder and the left side of your head to the ground so you're coming into rotation
and then inhale and come out and we'll do rotation on the other side so inhale open your right arm up exhale rotate lower your right shoulder the right side of your head to the ground sinking into the ground inhale and exhale here And then inhale and come back center. Let's do a couple more cats. Exhale round and inhale and arch. And then we're gonna come back down onto our backs with our knees bent and our feet flat on the floor. I forgot to do something first. <laughs> so we're going backwards in the class plan. Okay, knees bent, feet flat on the floor. So it's interesting actually to do cat and then come back down on your back and notice and feel what your spine feels like lying on the ground now. And from here you're going to inhale. Exhale, roll your head to the right side. And then inhale, center. And exhale, roll your head to the left side. Breathe in center. Breathe out, roll your head to the side. So feel the range of motion in your neck. Allow your head to be heavy, heavy, heavy on the ground, your shoulders to be heavy on the ground. And let there be, so don't let there be any effort at all. Let this just be uh, relax, relaxing and letting go of your head space between your teeth so your jaw is relaxed. And then come back to the center. You're going to add your arms to this and your elbows. So just to make sure that your shoulders are sinking heavy into the ground, just take a moment, inhale, lift your shoulders off the ground and exhale, sink them back down into the ground. Feel your arm bones heavy sinking into the ground. Breathe in here. Breathe out, roll your head and your elbows and shoulders to the right. Breathe in center. Breathe out, roll your head and your elbows and shoulders to the left. So your spine is moving in counter rotation here. It's a very great neck release. And your shoulder joints and elbow joints are getting some release too. Anytime you notice effort coming into this, pause, release, surrender, let go. back to the center and then your head and elbows are going to go in the opposite direction so elbows to the right head to the left now try to keep that um, lack of effort so no tension gathering if that means less range of motion then that's okay. 
trying to teach our bodies on our yoga mats how to move without gathering tension and to be able to do that in our shoulder girdle area neck area in a place where uh, I don't know about you but I think it's quite habitual for a lot of people to gather and carry tension so if we can practice letting it go here in a controlled environment then when we get off our yoga mats we can know what it's like to not have tension in this area as well and we can take it off this feeling of not having tension in our shoulder and necks and uh, translate it to areas off our mat like at our computers sitting at our desks driving in stressful situations But if we can't even find it in our yoga practice, then we're not going to be able to find it in our day-to-day -day life. So let's try to find it in our yoga practice. Okay, and then let's just do a little 10 tigers running through the forest. Take your fingers at the base of your neck and run them up through your uh, the back of your head through your hair so that you're lengthening the back of your neck And just notice and feel how your spine feels now. So now my head's actually off my mat now, which I'm pretty sure it wasn't when I started. So that's how much my neck is lengthened here. Now make a deal with yourself here that you're going to keep that relaxation, that elongation with no effort uh, when you come up to seated here. So roll to your side. Make your way up to seated. And we're going to sit for our mudra, which is the shell mudra now. So the way that the shell mudra works is that you're going to take your left hand up. You're going to wrap your right fingers around your thumb. And then you're going to place your thumb, your right thumb on your middle finger of your left hand. And you're going to bring this to rest at your sternum. Okay, so you're going to sit like this in a way that is alert, uh, yet relaxed. So see if you can uh, allow your spine to be your structural support here. So you don't need to effort through your muscles to sit up here. You can allow your skeleton, your spine. So let your pelvis sink into the ground here. And your spine will allow you to be vertical here and see how much muscular tension you can allow to just let go. And then close your eyes to receive the teachings for today. So this shell mudra is very calming for your throat chakra, for your voice, especially if you add the mantra om to it. That might be something you want to do on your own time in your own practice. And also, it's um, as a result, it also relieves tension in your neck. So everything I learned about the importance of my spine, I learned from my teachers at Esther Meyer's yoga studio. Your spine is your structural, nervous, and energetic core of your body. Esther Meyers says, when you connect with your spine, you are connected with the core of who you are, where you stand, and what you believe and value. So just as we did before we started the, this part of the class, take a moment as you're sitting here to become aware of your spine. 
Notice how it allows you to orient yourself in space. Notice how it gives you your position in a sense of direction in relation to the ground underneath your tailbone and your pelvis. So notice how it gives you a sense of verticality in this position as you're sitting on the ground. Feel your spine as you sit and allow it to support you fully. And as you do so, you may begin to notice that the more you sink into the center of your being, into, the, into your spine, all muscular tension can start to let go. So the skeletal support of your spine allows your muscle tension to release. So not only is spinal support important, but also mobility and flexibility is incredibly important. And that's what we were focusing on before we came to the seated position. So through the practice of yoga postures, you move your spine through flexion. That's rounding your spine, extension, bending your spine backwards, rotation, that's twisting your spine, lateral extension, so that's side bending, and rotation as well as axial extension or decompression as you vertically elongate your spine. So you do that in poses like downward facing dog or uh, wide legged standing forward fold where, or standing forward fold where your spine hangs and gravity pulls on your spine. In several of these movements, your spine elongates and lengthens. Esther Myers describes your body being divided in half at your waist. So the lower half of your body is pulled into the ground through gravity, like the roots of a plant. And we focused on that a lot last week in our grounding class. And your upper body is released up towards the sky like a stem. Esther Myers describes the elongation of your spine giving you a sense of direction, a sense of where you're going in this world. So take a moment now to drop into your own physical body. Come into the center of your being. Tune into your spine. And ask your spine where it is leading you. Your neck is an incredibly important part of your spine. So it allows your head to turn in all directions, opening you to many possibilities. However, the opposite is also true. Stiff necks, which are incredibly common in our culture, may also mean that you don't know which way to turn or that you can only see the option that's in front of you. A flexible cervical spine or neck opens you up in a graceful and fluid way to let go of rigidity and embrace going with the flow. So reflect on these teachings and how they relate to you in your life and begin to form an intention of what you would like to receive from the rest of the class. What is it that you're trying to create, sustain, release, or rebirth in your life? And how could your yoga practice help you to do that best? Okay, once you've formed your intention, you can open your eyes and we're going to do a Kapalabhati breath practice here. We could keep, you can use your mudra still through this. So the way this breath pr practice works is it's Kapalabhati breath, it's skull shining breath. And the reason why I chose it was that Esther Myers often used it as a way to teach about the fluidity and the movement of the spine to feel the dynamic quality of your spine so that your spine actually moves while you do it. Now that's not to say that your head should not be bobbing all around when you do it, so you don't want to give yourself whiplash when you do uh, Kapalabhati breath, but uh, as your navel draws back, so you exhale, there will be some, uh, your spine can move slightly, okay? And you can feel that 
movement in your spine. So you're going to exhale the way I teach it is you exhale with a ha and your belly draws back and then the inhalation is passive through your nose. So let's start with just the ha's and through our mouth and then we'll move on to doing it through our nose. Ha, ha. Close your mouth and start doing it through your nose. So your exhalation is passive, your inhalation, your exhalation is active, your navel draws back, your inhalation is passive. You might feel that wave-like movement all the way up through your spine as your navel draws back and it pumps that movement up through your spine. So allow that dynamic quality of your spine to happen. Big inhale, full exhale, breathe in part way, breathe out when the need is great. So I hope you felt that dynamic quality of your spine with the Kapalabhati breath. We're gonna move on and we're gonna do a lateral bend of your spine with gate pose. So come up onto your knees, stand on your left knee, take your right leg out to the side, level off your pelvis. Inhale, take your arms straight overhead. Exhale and side bend off to the side. And then inhale, come up. We're going to go to the other side. And then you're going to take your left leg out to the side, standing on your right leg. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, side. Bend over to the side. You're just going to avoid uh, putting any weight on your knee joint. So we're side bending, bringing your uh, spine into a lateral bend, lateral extension. And we're going to inhale, come up, and we're going to make our way up to standing. Okay, we're going to do some movements for your neck from standing. So uh, you're just going to start by taking your right ear to your right shoulder. And then your left ear to your left shoulder. And 
And then your chin to your chest. And we're gonna circle your head in front. Okay, we're going to come to the top of our mat and we're going to do some sun salutations. And uh, the reason why we're going to do sun salutations today is to feel the wave of your spine. So feel all the directions that your spine moves in sun salutations. It's said that you could have a complete practice if you just did sun salutations because your spine moves in every direction except for twists. You'd have to do a twist at the end of it and uh, side bend, but otherwise you've got a complete practice. So start to feel and I'll, I'll cue also the movements that your spine's making. So you're gonna inhale and reach up, lift your spine up, lift your chest up. So your spine's coming into extension now. You've got a little bit of a back bend here. And then you're gonna exhale and you're gonna round forward and you've got that uh, elongation of your spine here forward. And then you're gonna inhale, step your right foot back Exhale, step your left foot back, downward facing dog. Inhale, you're going to come all the way, tuck your tailbone all the way under, you're going to come into uh, upward facing dog. I'm having a brain fart on how to do sun salutations today. <laughs> I, uh, I honestly can't remember. I don't know why. Exhale, you're going to come into downward facing dog. I mean, I've done them not as often as some people, but I've done them a hundred times. You're going to inhale, walk your right foot forward. Exhale, walk your left foot forward. And then you're going to inhale, come up. And exhale, your hands come to your heart center. Okay, I remember what I forgot in sun salutations. It's the whole chaturanga thing. So <laughs> I got it. You know, that's what happens in summertime. You just, you know, you kind of forget parts of your practices. And you guys were all, you wouldn't have told me that I forgot that part. I know you wouldn't have. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're going to inhale, reach up. Extension. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, reach your left foot back. Exhale, reach your right foot back. So you can keep your knees up or you can lower them down and elbows in lower down. So now inhale, reach up. Here's your back bend, Cobra. Okay. And then toes under, exhale, downward facing dog. Now inhale, your left foot comes in. Exhale, your right foot comes in. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to your heart center. <laughs> she does know how to do a sun salutation. <laughs> Inhale, reach up. That comes into extension. Exhale, forward. Spine comes into flexion. Inhale, your right foot comes back. Left foot comes back. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, your spine comes into a back bend. Exhale, forward bend. That's the axial extension here, right? Where the spine gets elongated. Now you're going to inhale, walk your right foot in. Exhale, walk your left foot in. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Now inhale, reach up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, left foot back. Feel your spine moving through this whole thing. Elbows in, lower down. Inhale, chest comes up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot in. Exhale, right foot in. 
Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to your heart. And now I can even remember how Esther Myers did hers. Which is slightly different, which I'm going to show you. And you're going to love it if you hate the chaturangas. Because <laughs> it almost bypasses them. But you feel your spine moving more. Which they were big on it. And they were big on not exhausting yourself in your practice too. Okay, so inhale, reach up. Now, instead of doing the flat back fold forward, they did the exhale round down fold forward. Inhale, right foot back. Exhale, left foot back. So instead of the chaturanga, they did a whole like cat pose. You're going to round back and then you're going to come forward here. So this is your chaturanga here, like a cat forward and then cobra. Then downward facing dog. Then your right foot forward. Then your left foot forward. Sorry, my necklace keeps banging every time. That's probably bugging Tim more than anybody else. And then you're gonna inhale, roll up through your spine. And exhale, hands to your heart. So we'll do the Esther Meyer style one one more time. Inhale, reach up. So exhale, you roll down forward through your spine. And then you inhale, you walk your left foot back. Exhale, walk your right foot back. So we're going to lower down into cat pose. You exhale, you shift your weight back around. And you inhale, you come forward. Cobra. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, left foot forward. Exhale, right foot forward. Inhale, roll up. And exhale, hands to your heart. So just um, play around with that in your, in your own practice and see if you can feel the movement and fluidity of your spine. So I wanted to do warrior one and warrior two as well in the style of Esther Myers. So that you could, because the way she practices her standing poses was with the short stance so you could feel the rooting down from the pelvis down and then the fluidity of your spine from the pelvis up. So it's all about the movement of your spine. Okay, so for the standing uh, postures, she did short stance and the idea was that they are the same as walking. So what you do is you start from Tadasana mountain pose and you just take a step forward so take a step forward with your left foot just like you would if you were walking and that's your stance for your warrior one so feel your legs really rooting down into the ground and then just let your arms float up feel that same stability through your skeleton as you did when you were sitting and see if you can sense the movement and fluidity through your spine And it's as you breathe that you're going to feel the movement in your spine. And then warrior two comes right out of warrior one. And it's all about movement in your thoracic spine. So the spine that's part of the spine that's attached to your ribs. And so all you're gonna do is rotate your upper arms. And that's warrior two in Esther Meyer's uh, yoga. So just rotating that upper part of my spine, relaxing my shoulders. And then I'm going to do a reverse warrior two. So I'm going to take my left arm back and my right arm forward. 
and feeling that rotation through my upper body. So we're going for that fluidity, that movement in your spine. That's the whole point here. And then release and let that go. <sighs> okay. And then let's uh, do this on the other side. So I'm going to take a step forward with my other foot, like I'm taking a normal step. So I'm just going to close my eyes and take a step forward. So it's a normal step. My front leg is bent slightly. My back leg is straight. And I'm just feeling the lower half of my body from my pelvis down just sinking into the ground. It's almost as if it's just, like I'm really imagining it becoming part of the earth. There's like a heaviness to it, like it's just sinking and sinking into the earth. And then my spine, there's that freedom to it, like the stem of a flower. Uh, that's the part of my body that's moving and I'm inhaling and reaching my arms up with as little effort as possible again. So there's no tension being created in my shoulders and my neck. And I'm feeling that freedom and mobility and movement in my spine as I breathe here. And then you're going to rotate through your thoracic spine. Your left arm comes back, your right arm comes forward. So that's movement through the rib cage part of your, of your spine. And this part of your spine can be really tight and stiff. So for those of you that are members, the upper back rehydration with the soft foam roller, that, that rehydration series could be really useful to do with the soft foam roller if you're feel, if this part of your body's feeling really stiff i would recommend doing that to get if you're having a hard time feeling movement or breath in your part of your back where your ribs are your upper back your shoulders And then I'm going to do that reverse warrior where my right arm comes back, my left arm comes forward. So my hips are still facing forward. All the movement is coming through my thoracic spine. The reverse warrior too. Okay, and then release your arms down. And uh, we're gonna come up to the front of your mat. So I'm just gonna apologize for all the airplane traffic in this uh, class because uh, we are pretty close to the flight pass. And because of the time of day we're filming, if we don't keep the camera rolling, then yeah, we're losing light too. So. It's like this constant thing that we deal with, right? Lighting, time of day, when to film. Lighting should be good now. <laughs> Airplane traffic is heavy right now. Anyway. Okay. Inhale, you're going to reach up. 
and then you're gonna exhale fold forward and we're gonna come into downward facing dog and hold now in this one I really want you to focus on lengthening your spine so if that means a deep knee bend so you can get that axial extension that decompression of your spine then bend your knees deeply okay And also here you can really let go of your head as well. So let your head dangle and release your neck a lot. And if it's too much strength in your upper body to feel the axial extension here, to feel that lengthening of your spine, then do it against the wall or on uh, use a table where you can really get that sense of extension through your spine. Okay, and then slowly release down. And we're gonna do some back bending here. We're gonna do two back bends. Uh, one is my, the two are, I, I love both these back bends. Anyway, okay, so we're gonna come down onto our belly. Okay, so you're gonna line your belly with your arms straight out in front of you, roll your pelvis from side to side. And then you're going to, once your low back is released, you're going to walk your elbows back underneath your, underneath your shoulders. And uh, once you're here, we're just going to do a little bit of uh, neck release as well. Okay, and then in the center, chin to chest and lift. And depending on your neck, you might be able to bring your neck into extension, like look all the way up. So see what works for you and your body. For some reason, this has inspired Tim to do squats behind the camera. If you have a hard time with uh, moving your neck, you can just move your eyes. Okay, and then we're going to come down and rest on your belly for a moment. And then we're going to do another back bend because it's a spine class and I don't know why I felt like putting two back bends in today. Uh, I'm going to give you a modification though. You could do the Sphinx again. How about that be your modification? If you don't want to do this, you can do the Sphinx again. Otherwise, you're going to join me on your backs. This is fun. I like that you're staying in that camera angle. We'll see what that's like. Tuck your hands under your legs. We're going to do fish pose. Press into your elbows. You're going to lift your chest off the ground, keep your pelvis and legs on the ground, and then rest on the top of your head. There's hardly any weight on the top of your head. You're just touching the top of your head on the ground. And I chose this one because it really opens up the front of your neck.
Just check in in your body and see if there's anywhere that you can relax and let go a little bit more. And then press into your elbows, slowly lower down. And roll to your side. You're going to make your way up to seated. And we're going to do easy twist. So just sit with your legs crossed. Now, if you always sit with your legs crossed this way, you're going to cross them the other way. So the other leg is in front, just so you get some balance in your body. And then you're going to take your right hand to the outside of your left knee. Rotate. And then we'll twist the other way so your left hand comes to the outside of your right knee. And then come back to the center. And I thought we'd do that um, twist, that neck release that we did a couple of weeks ago. So many of you told me in the comments that you found it really helpful. So we, I thought we'd do it again. So take your left hand, sit on it. Drop your right ear to your right shoulder. And then turn your chin to your chest. And bring it back up. And then let's do that on the other side. So sit on your hand and Lower your opposite ear to the shoulder. Now I'm remembering there was one more layer to this. We'll go back and do it. Turn your chin to the chest. Roll it back up. Let's go back to the first side. Sit on your left hand. Lower your ear to the shoulder. Lift your opposite hand up and over. Reach at the base of your skull and lengthen. Turn your chin to your chest, reach your fingertips down to the base of your skull and lengthen. And then release. That was it. Now you're going to sit on your hand, opposite hand. Drop your ear to your shoulder, reach up and over, draw up from the base of your skull. And 
And then chin to your chest, drop your fingers around the back of your skull. And then lift up and feel the difference in your neck. Okay, now we're gonna do child's pose and that's our last pose. You okay, Tim? <laughs> and then we're gonna, this is just to have that long draping motion through your spine for our last pose. So just feel how long your spine feels now, hopefully, and feel how your spine just drapes forward here. Take a deep breath in. And slowly make your way out of this pose. And then you're gonna lie down on your back for Shavasana. If you have any low back issues, you can bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor or place that bolster underneath your knees that we had at the beginning of the class. This is a really important part of the class to allow your body to receive your practice physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically. You're going to stay here and I will sit up and read you a poem. This is verse 21 and 22 of the Radiant Sutras. The spine has secret passageways to the subtle dimensions of life. Attend simultaneously to the area around your tailbone as vibrating with luminous space and to the spine gushing with radiant spaciousness. The ecstatic energy of that emptiness will surge through and carry you into the world beyond all thought. Behind the spine is infinity. Below the perineum, invisible roots pulsating. Open downward into space. The heart is wide as a spiral galaxy. Steadily consider back, root, heart, and know the living body of vastness that you are.
Reflect back on your experience of today's class. Notice what stands out for you. What seems most important? And how does that thing that seems important relate to you and your life off your yoga mat? What's one small thing you're going to take with you from your experience today of your yoga practice off your mat and into your life? So gradually allow your breath to deepen, wiggle your fingers and your toes, bend your knees, roll to your side and slowly make your way up to seated. Thank you so much for joining me for episode number 349 of Yoga with Melissa. If you like this class, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to our classes then we put one out every single Friday so if you subscribe to our channel then you can uh, get one in your feed every single Friday Um, I want to thank Paige Tracy and Hannah for their donations and if you are receiving value from Yoga with Melissa then you can make a monetary donation below you can also contribute of your time and your influence to the direction of the next Yoga with Melissa class by answering the following question in the comments. What would you like to see in the next Yoga with Melissa for the back to school series? A class on strength or a class on flexibility? So write strength or flexibility in the comments and let me know why it's important to you. So let me know if strength is more important to you or let me know if flexibility is important, more important to you and why. And I'm going to make my decision on what class I'm going to new, do next based on what I get more requests for and also who makes the best argument for the class next. So if you are persuasive, then you've got a chance for getting your choice next. So leave your comments and I will be listening. And also you've got a better chance if you make them sooner in the week than later because we usually film on Tuesdays. <laughs> so it well Tuesdays are Wednesday. Well, we usually film on Wednesdays. So the class comes out on Friday, so get your comments in quickly. <laughs> And if you'd like my back to school list of my a list of 10 essential yoga classes to get you through the back to school season, then go to melissawest.com slash 349. Scroll down. There's an opt-in box. Put in your email address and we'll send that to you. Today we focused on the spine. We have a whole series in our membership site for spine, neck, and your nervous system. So to ease anxiety. This series begins with a class to help overcome all the time you spend sitting, working at computers, and interacting with handheld devices like the one I'm holding right now. Um, and it will create in, that create immobility in your spine, and it will move your spine into its more natural alignment. The first class benefits your nervous system, draws fluid into your intervertebral discs, and benefits all parts of your back, neck, and helps build bone density. The second class in the series will offer modifications and variations for people with wrist, knee, and neck issues, as well as options for people who want to do yoga in a chair. The third class uses the soft foam roller, a slow-mo ball, and a squash ball to help keep fascia hydrated, and it helps to maintain mobility and integrity and resilience of your fascia by hydrating your fascia. So that's our connective tissue classes that are only in our membership site. Fourth class in the series will demonstrate how your nervous system can adapt more easily when it feels safe with the use of restorative yoga. 
You can do uh, poses more easily. The fifth class uses acupressure and traditional Chinese medicine to build your energy reserves and restore energy and harmony and fluidity to your spine and your entire being. The sixth class provides options for each of the Ayurvedic doshas to bring balance to Vata, Pitta, and Kapha. And finally, a Shavasana uh, pose um, is offered. And I also put a brand new class up just for your neck this week. So that is what I have for you. If you'd like to become a member or if you are a member, the links to that will be in the show notes. I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May you be as rooted as the trees in our forest. May you be as strong as our mountains and you may your joy be as deep as our ocean, Pacific Ocean. Om Shanti. Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.